Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on your favorite little slide YouTube channel. Yes, the paper which I'm holding here in my hand is to request you all to subscribe to our little sla YouTube channel. Nothing more, nothing big. Just give a subscription, subscribe button. Just click on subscribe button and you are subscribing to our, our your favorite little sla YouTube channel. So please don't forget to subscribe to our little sla YouTube channel. Thank you, and we'll now move on to the video. Hello, yeah, and welcome to your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. And I believe you would have subscribed to our channel now. So, uh, what are we going to see today? Mm. Now, one of our previous videos we saw about app dynamics, like how to monitor the CPU utilization, how to monitor the memory utilization before, during, and after the load test, or even after you can do that for the same thing for your stress test or for your spike test or for any types of performance testing. And in this video, another important topic which is the databases, right? Because databases plays a major role in any application. It's because if for any applications, database serves as the backbone of application they stores the data they retrieves the data they help uh, to hold to process the user's information and also they help to communicate right so uh, for example like if you're an amazon you must need to have um, a tons of uh, items right tons of items in the databases and the user's details as well like when you're logging in yes the user details has to be processed from the databases so by any chance databases plays a major role which i would say a, a backbone of any application uh so take any take for any example like if you are uh, working on a, a e ticket application right so for booking a ticket first you need to log in or you need to have the collection of uh, the details of the uh, the shows right so all these sits on the databases so for by any chance for any application yes again and again again i'm telling you we need data and for da storing the data we need databases right so in this one uh, in this video we'll see uh, how uh, to monitor the database so i have the db1 and here uh, we have the property so i'm using the db1 databases and the port that we use to listen is 1521 and we all know uh, the ports play a major role like if you say for example uh, the port number the port number 80 is used to communicate um, the http and 443 is used to communicate the https request like, same way we do have the 1521 port uh, to communicate with the databases and yes, we do allow logins and the database status is active. Yep, because it's, it's a working application. Yes, and the database state is active and the instance mode are regular and the active state is normal and the instance role is primary instance. Yes, we do have two instances. One is a primary instance and the other one is a secondary instance where we use the secondary instance as the database backup part, right? So we all must know this. So for any databases, we used to have two instances. One is the primary instance and the other one is yes secondary instance and then we do have a log mode which is no archive log so what does mean no archive log is we do have a no archive log and archive log so when i say no archive log they are like fresh data like hot data but when you are seeing it as an archive log they are like a stored one like they are something like they keep on storing the items which they normally don't use it very often they just use it only when they need it back and then the database role is primary and no flashback and the custom icon path is oracle and here we have the IP address of this machine, which is it's at some 172.31.700.244. And yep, so these are the details which I, uh, which you actually need to know when, I mean, like same way uh, for your application, you must need to know, need to know the databases, um, all its status and all the properties. So coming back to the problems, there are no problems, zero active and zero close. In case if your database has any problems, then you might see this here, and you also have to make sure that. There should be no active or there should be, I mean, like all the issues has to be closed. And then the third part, which is the statement performance. So this one here will tell you which, I mean, what are the queries that are used in your applications and how much time does it take to process? Say, for example, the very first request, right, the DBMS stats.gather database stats job. So this particular job has taken 14.5 seconds to process for every single time. So this is very important to know because any 
transaction or any request that is related with this application yes will automatically have a higher response time because to process this particular query you need to have like 14.5 seconds which means this will add to your request say for example this will add the, to the latency the processing time the web application processing time the query application the query processing time and then the uh, the request or for the response to return back from the server to the browser so all this gets added and you automatically will get a higher and higher response time so it always has to be like we always have to make sure that we are tuning the databases we are tuning the queries to make sure we are getting a higher lower response time and even for the other one the second uh, scenario where we are kind of selecting some not still objects even for this one yes we do get 4.3 seconds which is really on the highest side and then we do have another call that is dbms space auto space advisor job pro which is like take like 1.7 seconds and same way yep other queries are less than one second but still when there are like more number of calls or when there are um, more number of items that are getting returned yes automatically the response times would go higher so always make sure that you are taking care of this you also have you always have to fix this these kind of issues you always have to make sure that this is fixed and you always have to have a lesser response time so this part the db part in your dynatrace will help you to find this and fix it and then the cpu so for example like this particular query actually it has taken like 1.1 of cpu of time say uh, one hour 1.1 1 of cpu time during the total execution i mean like it, it actually took a lot of time to complete its execution to complete its processing and the same uh, same applies for the other uh, queries as well and then we have the memory okay I, I think we can actually go through this part so here if you see we have got the cpu cores right i mean this is not for your app server this is for your database server so we have two cpu cores and this here's the cpu usage so here you can see the foreground cpu usage and then we have the background cpu usage so as you're seeing here there were like two different cpu usages one is the foreground and the other one is the background so let's now see what is the foreground so when i just select this foreground which you're seeing now here actually this foreground cpu usage is referring to the cpu consumption of the act process of an application so it can be the one that currently being interacted with the user and this is particularly relevant for mobile applications and desktop applications where distinctions exist between the foreground and background processes so say for example if I'm clicking on the background process here you can see it's like very less it's like less like 0.1 1.5 but on the other hand if you see the foreground process it actually max out to 40 uh, 1.5 and the reason is so what is a user focus processing so you have to measure the cpu usage of the task directly related to the applications active usage. so anything that is related to the applications active usage is the user focused processing and uh, in fact these foreground cpu usage have must have a high uh, foreground i mean like i must have a performance impact so why is that is because if you have if you are observing a high foreground cpu usage that can indicate inefficiency so when i say inefficiencies it can be an excessive computation or poorly optimized process so even in this scenario you can see that the the cpu usage was normal for a long time but at some point of time it actually went up to 41.5 which is really a high or which is really a spike or which is really an excessive computation and even in fact uh, take for example in mobile applications the excessive foreground cpu consumption can lead to battery dry and slow ui responsiveness say for example if you are using uh, if you're testing mobile applications right so yeah most of us do nowadays make so every application are uh, coming with the mobile version so if your foreground cpu consumption is high then it can lead to battery drain and then the uh, second part which is the background cpu so what is a background cpu so this background cpu that you're seeing here is actually refers to the cpu which is consumed by the application when it is running the background without direct user interaction or it can actually include the background tasks like data syncing schedule jobs background services so any high background cpu can impact the system performance again the battery life for mobile applications and resource availability and it is monitored separately for from the foreground cpu usage. say for example if you are seeing the foreground cpu usage 
it's quite high when compared to the background cpu usage right so that's that's the difference between the foreground and the background and we all know foreground or uh, just to summarize foreground is our foreground cpu usage or the active applications usage and the background usage are the systems or uh, the background tasks like data syncing or scheduled jobs and background services jobs right and then moving on to the memory yes we do have the pga memory and then we do have the pga were used for work areas and then we do have pga target versus limit so all these gives us the uh, memory usage in terms of the uh, databases so this one which you see here the pga what does a pga refers to so the pga means the program global area memory uh, it, actually, this is a memory region in the Oracle. So as you see here, the DB1, which is part of the Oracle databases, it is used for storing session specific data and that is not shared among multiple sessions. So it is allocated for each database server process and it actually helps in executing the SQL queries efficiently. So some of the key points about PGA memory before I leave on to the next one, which is they are session specific which means they store data like sorting hashing and session related information for individual user connections and unlike the sga which is a system global area pga is not shared among users so that's the reason you can see a higher memory in terms of the uh, the pga and they can be managed manually or we can also manage them automatically so this memory how does it affects the performance or how does it relate to the performance so if you have an insufficient pga memory it may lead to disk swapping which will actually slow down the query so that's that's how important the pga queries is and it's not like something like the normal memory which we see it in the uh, for the app servers this pga memory is quite different right so as we're seeing here because they are session specific and they are not shared among the users and so like you see here they are uh, used for the work areas and what is the target and what is the limit so here it's a, this part is a limit and okay let me just get this one yep this is the target but we do have a higher limit for this so same way we can see the memory and then coming to the query performance and here you can see the database load which uh, is i mean like here if you see the database time and the database cpu let me just uh, let me explain you what is the database time and database cpu real quick so let me uh, let me quickly explain what is the database time. So the total time spent by the active session in the database, which includes both CPU time and the wait time. And this actually represents the overall workload on the databases. And then the DB CPU, which you see here, is the portion of the DB time. So it is actually the portion of the DB time that you're seeing here. Uh, where the database is actively using the CPU for processing queries and excluding any wait time. And uh, the DB time is actually that was the sum of DB CPU plus wait time. So that's the DB time. So that's the reason you can see more DB time and lesser DB CPU. And yep, so that's about the DB time and the DB CPU. And then we do have SQL connection time. We do have SQL parse time. We do have PL SQL execution time and SQL execution time. So all these are very important in terms of collecting the database performance. And we do have connection management time as well and the time spent on other activities. Also, all these items are saved, and then we do have the physical read, right? So when you are reading or writing database, uh, I mean, like data from the databases, yes, automatically there will be a high amount of utilization. So that's why you can see uh, there is a high physical read and um, an average of like 10 to 12 MB of uh, physical bytes written. And here you can see the total wait time for all these database queries and everything, all the database activities. And then we do have the sessions. So we do have uh, I mean, total sessions that has been active. Uh, that has been in the system and the amount of active sessions and we do have the block sessions that are like zero block sessions and then we do have a few deadlocks yep during the time yep here on the top of the screen okay let me just disable everything okay so we do have zero deadlocks so there are like no deadlocks in the system which is a real good um, performance in terms of databases and then we do have locks so all these metrics has to be monitored. so you might ask me like which one should i choose it depends on your uh, application. So in case if you're finding any bottlenecks or in case if you're finding any issues, please do note it down. Please do let know the developers. Please do uh, inform the same to your uh, the business analyst team and everybody and make sure that, that they're fixed before it has moved to production. 
so yeah with that i come to the end of this video and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet and uh, thank you so much for watching the entire video so until i watch you uh, i mean uh, until i see you all in the next videos bye bye from us and share your favorite little slide youtube channel take care and bye bye